This is our new Torchmate 4510. It's a five foot by 10 foot plasma table. And it's gonna be pretty hard to use like this. So I'm going to unbox it. Hey, I'm Gail Banks. Welcome to Engineering Unboxed, where every day is Christmas. As you may know, we've got a full manufacturing and production facility, so we've got laser and CNC handled. But the guys in this building in our race shop need the ability to cut fast and accurately on the fly. For example, Eric Ryder, one of our fabricators, is building the chassis and the supporting systems for dyno cell number two. There are dozens of brackets, hangers, mounts, and various items that will need to be cut out of steel, stainless steel, and aluminum plate. We want to do it quickly, and we don't want to tie up our production laser. So we hopped on the phone with our friends Hunter and Chris at Lincoln's Torchmate division up in Reno, and they said, we've got just the tool for you. So behind me is the brand new Lincoln Torchmate 4510. It hit the market just a few months ago, and we have one of the very first units. But before I dig into the details, I want to explain why we chose Lincoln. An electrical engineer from Painesville, Ohio, named John Cromwell Lincoln, founded the company in 1895. That's around the same time Nikola Tesla was experimenting with wireless communication. John was an inventor, and you know I'm partial to inventors. At age 25, he patented his first invention, an electric brake for streetcars. John went on to file 55 more patents. Talk about forward thinking. In addition to electric motors, his Cleveland, Ohio-based Lincoln Electric Company sold chargers for electric automobiles. Here's John and his wife taking a spin in their electric car around the turn of the century. Get this. John also invented the variable speed electric motor, which he was granted a patent for in 1916. Let this sink in for a moment. He invented the variable speed electric motor. Oh my God. But it was an invention in 1911 that would change fabrication forever. John invented the world's first portable welding machine. Here's a photo from around 1915 of a Lincoln 400 amp double operator stable arc welder powered by a Buddha six cylinder gas engine for welding in the field. He also patented flux. My God, what would we do without flux? In 1918, he applied for a patent covering the method and means for electric arc welding. Wow, that patent was granted in 1929. That took 11 years. He must have been a patient man. I just got a patent in less than 11 months. John would become the authority in welding, publishing the Procedure Handbook of Arc Welding Design in 1933. Lincoln welders would prove to be invaluable during World War II. Picture this, right down here at the harbor in LA and elsewhere, Henry J. Kaiser, was building Liberty ships, and they were welded together with Lincoln welders. That's big. Lincoln Electric would go on to pioneer innovations in areas from electrodes to robotic welding. Flash forward to 2011, Lincoln expanded its cutting solutions with the acquisition of Reno-based Torchmate. Torchmate specializes in CNC, plasma, and oxyfuel cutting tables and systems. And that's what we have here. All right, let's cut the shrink wrap off this beast. Lincoln Electric 1170 trademark drive. Important things happen there that get trademarked. I'm, I'm sure of that. I don't think I've ever unboxed anything this big. I think I'm gonna cut between the legs. There's metal legs in there and below the table, somewhere right about here. I don't want to 
cut into the legs. Just pull the plastic out as I go. Ooh, an electric cord. That's another thing I don't want to cut with a knife. All right. There is a FlexCut 80, right in there. Ah. I gotta see more of this. Man, that's tough. All right, let's see. Oh my God, this is sexy stuff. Holy, this is the gantry. Wow, 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 wow. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. A little sample here uh, of some torch work. 4510, how about that? Nice looking cut. That's a souvenir. So you remove everything that doesn't look like a Torchmate 4510, and what have you got? A Torchmate 4510, look at this thing. So this machine will take a five foot by 10 foot workpiece. The workpiece can weigh up to 40.8 pounds per square foot, which just happens to be the weight per square foot for one inch mild steel plate. So you could put 50 square feet of one inch mild steel on this table and it would just smile at you. So the 4510, which is the 4000 series, five foot by 10 foot, gets filled with 140 gallons of water, bringing the water level pretty much net to the top of the slats. And to prevent rust, we're using plate guard at a 10 to one ratio. This is a proprietary formula. It's biodegradable and it'll stop rust in its tracks. And this is the good part because I get to talk about the, the laser, laser beam. beam. So why do I need a laser on this thing? Well let's, well, let's just say you pick up that piece of one inch plate with the forklift and you, you put it onto the bed. You back away and you, you discover it's not quite square with the bed. So rather than punching it around. I mean, imagine you got a sheet, 2,040 pounds of steel. You're not going to easily square it up. The laser takes care of that. It will go to the corners, put those locations in software, and adjust the entire cutting program to the true position of the sheet. Well, a lot of tables have kind of a square over in the corner, and you jam the plate into it to square it up. But when you get big stuff and it's real heavy, that's not an easy thing to do. The laser solves the problem. So once we got the plastic off, here's the goodies we found underneath the table. Before I get it into the flex cut, I just want to clarify, this is the brains right here. And this on-screen setup is money. It allows you to draw a part on this screen. Literally, it's got all kinds of shapes already in the memory here. So you can pick a shape. It could be square, it could be round. You pick the shape, add your dimensions, and you're done. So what I'm saying is you're not tethered to a CAD designer. Your fabricator can be out here designing his own part on this screen independent of the CAD group. That's pretty cool. This is the brains. The flex cut is the brawn. So at the thicknesses we're going to be cutting, we chose this baby. The cut speed is screaming ass anyway. These things really rock. Let's just start with the input. The voltages vary in various shops and in various locations. What Lincoln has done with a flex cut 80 is provided the ability for the machine to sense the voltage and whether you're single phase or three phase, and it adjusts itself automatically to your supply voltage and phase re relationship. This is one serious cable and it comes without a plug. So you can put the appropriate single phase or three phase plug on the end. The machine itself is an inverter based design and it will deliver 80 amps and an 80% duty cycle. The, the end result of this is 
faster cut speeds, and minimal dross. And what that means is minimal cleanup, secondary operation. So you're, not, you're cutting at a more rapid rate than others we looked at. And once you're done cutting, you've got minimal cleanup. Machine time is, is less, and cleanup time is less, and you're saving money. While we're going to cut thinner material most of the time, the capability on this bed with the, this 80 amp unit, you can pierce mild steel up to three quarters of an inch. You can edge start mild steel up to one and a quarter inches. It will pierce five eighths aluminum and it'll edge start one inch aluminum. All right, so the next item here is our consumable starter kit. And the consumables have to do with the formation of, of the plasma. So you've got nozzles, you've got swirl ring, you've got electrodes. The cool part about all of this stuff is that it lasts three times longer due to their patent pending technology that's in this box. One of the things that I think is cool is on the electrode, in the center is a hafnium core. And I think that contributes quite a bit to electrode life right there. It's like this stuff is based on their 125 year history of patenting new, new art. So there's a lot going on in the consumables area. So this one's our mystery box. I'm not quite sure what's in here, but let's find out. Oh, wait a minute. I think this is our plate marker. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got a lot of goodies in the box here. Come on, baby. Here we go. So it's air powered. It's got a little punch. It mounts on the gantry. So off your CAD, this will give you center punch to drill a hole within four thousandths of true location, which is pretty damn accurate. But the other thing it does, which I think is really cool, is you can punch a design, you can punch a logo, you can punch a part number, you can punch instructions. They'll permanently be on the workpiece. I can't wait to have the plate marker fired up. I can't wait to fire up the whole damn thing, to tell you the truth. So this is very cool. And here's the last goodie, a 3350 series helmet. Now these guys come in a variety of styles. I mean, by that I mean colors, designs, comes with a storage bag. All right. That's a pretty sweet color scheme, don't you think? This thing has got multiple adjustments, so it'll be comfortable on your head all day. It's got a grind button. You can go from welding to grinding just by pushing that, that button, and it changes the screen darkness. So this is real handy. Although the code red design is very cool, it's really about the lens. And it's a big lens, lots of viewing area, 12 and a half square inches of, of viewing area. The rating on the lens and its operation, there's four prime factors. And the industry rates them one through three, one being best. So we start out with vision accuracy. That's the distortion of the images through the lens. This one has a number one rating on vision accuracy, so the distortion is minimal. Number two is light diffusion and blurriness. When they manufactured this lens, they minimized glass impurities. And that gives them a score of one because you get minimum distortion and a very clear view through this lens. Number three is shade uniformity. Does the lens darken in a consistent manner? That's the issue here. And once again, it gets a number one for shade uniformity across the lens. And the final rating is angle consistency. Whether you're looking up through the lens, straight out, or down, 
the shade remains uniform. And again, they scored a number one. And what blows my mind, inside the helmet you have three controls, one for sensitivity, one for shade, and one for delay time. This thing will switch from shade to clear in one twenty-five thousandth of a second. And if one twenty-five thousandth of a second is too fast, it's adjustable, you can slow it down. One thing I really like about the helmet is indoor-outdoor capability. This thing has the ability to distinguish between sunlight and the arc. So you get a consistent welding experience indoors or outdoors. This is a piece of engineering. Optical, electronic, all of it. No longer do you do this sort of thing like I, I did when I was young. I think they've come a long way since the early helmets. Well, what a bunch of goodies. I'm pretty excited about this. I can't wait to move it into position right behind the cameras here in the fab shop, get Dave to drop the 483 face to the machine and get this thing hotted up. You're going to see this Torchmate table in action in our upcoming videos, so stay tuned. So in case you put the wrong program on the right plate, there's an emergency stop button. Just don't tell my wife about this. She'll want to put one on me.